A recent article in the US publication HuffPo generated some interest, some shock and anger when it was revealed that a senior US official Brent McGurk is working on a plan for what happens in Palestine and West Asia after the war. Now this plan involves normalization of ties between Israel and Saudi Arabia, a lot of financial support for the Palestinians but no addressing key questions that the Palestinians have been raising all these years, all these decades and also seems to pretend that this war does not exist at all. The war that over the past three months has led to thousands and thousands of Palestinian deaths. Now we usually don't talk about articles uh, or individual Individual articles in this show, but this is kind of indicative of what the US policy on Palestine has been all these many years. So it's no surprise that there is this kind of thinking that is going on in the highest levels of the US uh, government and US State Department. We go to Abdul to find out more. Abdul, thanks for joining us. Not very often that we discuss an individual article from a media outlet, but this is an interesting one because it talks uh, about, of course, not only what certain sections in the Biden administration are thinking, also certain influential sections, but also seems to kind of tally with what the US policy has been all these years through the Trump era, through the Biden era, you know, and maybe even in the future. So maybe just take us through for the benefit of our viewers what this article is and what its central argument is. Well, uh, it primarily argues about uh, how uh, its conversation with uh, some of the US officials, of course, it does not name those officials, uh, uh, it, it emerges that one of the uh, main uh, uh, officials in the Biden administration called Brett McGurk is basically working on a plan which basically is related to the reconstruction of Gaza following the war uh, in collaboration with some of the Arab countries, uh, primarily Saudi Arabia, of course, in in uh, in return of some kind of normalization of relations with Israel, uh, or, or, and and also this basically talks about uh, uh, how it will kind of lead to a recreation of the Palestinian Authority, which uh, has been not only seen discredited. Uh, uh, in the way it is, go it has governed West Bank for last uh, out out almost three decades, but also uh, uh, its uh, absence of any authority in Gaza. So uh, the rise of Hamas uh, is primarily credited to the discredit uh, uh, or the uh, the problems with the Palestinian Authority, and therefore uh, there is an attempt to recreate Palestinian Authority with some new leadership. Um, uh, which are proposed. Of course, the the details of this particular uh, plan on which the McGurk is working, uh, supposedly working, is not given in the article, of course, but it does hint, hint that there will be an alternative set of leadership proposed for the Palestinian Authority, which will work uh, to control Gaza post the war. And under this leadership and in collaboration with the Arab states, Gaza will be rebuilt. Uh, so uh, and and all of this, of course, the the primary objective would be the normalization of Israel's relationship with most of the Arab countries, primarily Saudi Arabia. So this is what uh, the article is primarily talking about. And and if you see uh, Biden, uh, sorry, Blinken's uh, proposal, which he basically uh, uh, talked about during his Davos um, uh, uh, press conference or meeting uh, on Thursday. Oh, sorry, on Wednesday, he basically talked on those similar lines. So it seems there is some kind of uh, 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 truth, uh, maybe, uh, uh, related to what is uh, claimed in the article. In fact, uh, Blinken said that there should be uh, attempts to revive Palestinian Authority, uh, it should govern Gaza, and there should be a two-state solution, and and. That uh, the only way Israel could normalize its relationship with the other countries, Arab other sorry, Arab countries, is through uh, creation of a two uh, creation of an independent Palestinian state. But that independent Palestinian state will not be allowed to uh, work freely, of course. Uh, so this is largely what the article is uh, referring to, uh, which has published, which has been published in Half Post. Yeah. Right, Abdul. The reason uh, to talk about this article also, I think, is because it, uh, you know, the 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 argument or the plan that is being concocted here 
uh, almost pretends as though this war, Israel's war on Gaza has not existed at all because it is presenting exactly the same kind of, uh, you know, suggestions or so-called solutions which the United States was pushing many years ago that, you know, try to buy off the Palestinians with some kind of financial assistance, uh, you know, legitimize Israel's position further in the region by bringing all the Arab countries under uh, one uh, umbrella and uh, along with Israel and then sort of try to change the, you know, try to bring a more uh, friendly Palestinian authority, like you said, uh, which might deflect people's anger for some time. So, no lessons learnt at all, it seems. Exactly. Uh, in fact, it seems that th there is a completely, uh, 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 you can say, avoidance, uh, complete avoidance uh, about even acknowledging that there was some, there is something which is happening at this moment in in Gaza, and that what is happening is nothing new. It has been happening for last uh, three decades at least. If we are just talking about the post uh, Palestinian authorities creation, um, and. Uh, all those Israeli atrocities, uh, the killing of more than 24,000 uh, Palestinians and complete uh, wiping out of, of the Palestinian population, attempts to wipe out the Palestinian population from Gaza, uh, the repeated attacks in uh, uh, West Bank and uh, has the none of these has been acknowledged, of course, and therefore the uh, the solution is basically a repetition of, as you rightly pointed out, of what U.S. has been propagating for many decades now, uh, at least since the Oslo Accords in 1993. Uh, uh, see, the, even the solution does not even refer to what would happen to uh, uh, the the more than 500,000 illegal settlers which are there in the occupied uh, West Bank and around 200,000 illegal settlers in uh, 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 in East Jerusalem, which has been claimed by Palestinians as part of any independent state and said that this is non-negotiable. It does not offer any uh, kind of concrete uh, 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 kind of redressal to the Palestinians' demand of a return of the refugees. Uh, uh, one should remember that there are more Palestinians outside uh, the occupied territories living across the world than inside the occupied territories. And uh, if, uh, 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 to some extent, uh, those who have displaced from the 1948 borders. So uh, what would happen to them? None of these solutions, uh, none of these issues have been raised primarily because uh, it seems that there is an attempt to maintain some kind of status quo uh, in terms of refugees and kind of uh, work for a solution which basically uh, 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 "Quote unquote solution, of course, which addresses some parts of it uh, with in collaboration with the Arab states, and does not address any Palestinian issue. So the the idea that this will bring peace, because that is the central uh, uh, argument, both given by Blinken and hinted in the article, which is uh, referred to. Of course, the uh, U.S. officials acknowledge that part. Of course, that." Even if this happens, it will not bring any peace because it does not address the uh, the main concerns which Palestinians have been raising since uh, last 75 years. So, uh, of course, so uh, to just sum up, it does not uh, neither addresses the current situation which is created by the Israeli war and completely tries to ignore it, and nor it uh, nor uh, uh, it tries to addresses the larger uh, structural uh, issues, the larger fundamental issues which Palestinians have been raising when it comes to inde independent state. Uh, uh, so uh, the the solution, the so-called solution, basically, uh, it is an attempt to impose something which this, which the U.S. thinks. Uh, or the U.S. officials have been thinking. It is something like Kushner's plan, which was proposed in 2020, to kind of, they have a ready-made thing and they want to impose it on Palestinians without their consent, without addressing their basic uh, uh, grievances. Thank you so much for that. It does look like there is some opposition to this plan. In fact, I think Democratic lawmakers, uh, you know, signing a letter against Brent Magog. But nonetheless, I think it reveals that when it comes to the larger approach towards uh, Palestine, the approach towards Israeli occupation, there's really not much difference when it comes to Democrats or Republicans. And both of them prefer to sort of endorse, condone Israel's very genocidal attacks on the Palestinians. Thank you so much for speaking to us.
Cholera is a very easily preventable disease and it's in fact a shame that in the 21st century cholera continues to exist. But here is the news, cholera not only exists but the number of cases has actually been rising over the past few months. Zambia being one country which has recently been very hit very hard by this disease which is so easy, easily preventable. So why are these cases rising and especially in Africa, what can be done about it? We go to Anna Brachar to find out. Anna, thank you so much for joining us. Cholera seems a, a disease that is very easy to prevent, yet we are seeing, it seems like we are seeing a resurgence uh, in many parts of uh, the world, like you pointed out in your article. Could you maybe take us through what is happening on the ground, which are the regions most affected? Um, essentially, what we have seen last year is the continuation of a trend, which uh, which is quite worrying, and that's, uh, that's the number of the cases of cholera around the world are increasing. We are seeing... Um, very worrying uh, numbers of people dying from cholera, uh, which is a disease again that can be addressed by very simple interventions. So when you say that you know we uh, we need to fight against cholera, it means essentially ensuring that people have access to clean water and to sanitation. The increase of cases in cholera means that many many people do not have that, so they don't have the the essential living conditions that would allow them to lead uh, a, a life free of of such diseases. And now what the most recent UN uh, data shows is that in uh, 2023, uh, most of this burden caused by cholera was concentrated in Africa, especially in Eastern and Southern uh, Africa. Uh, and that uh, we had seen thousands of people losing their lives uh, to such uh, to, to this disease. Uh, as we speak, uh, many countries around the world are, are still struggling against active outbreaks of cholera. This includes Zambia. Uh, which uh, which declared an, an outbreak uh, near the end of 2023. But in this very short window of time, uh, over 400 people died. Schools have been closed. They will remain shut until the end of January, it seems. Uh, and even sport, sports complexes were turned uh, into receiving areas for, for, those, uh, for those at risk uh, and for those uh, who are being treated or uh, suspected of uh, of uh, having contracted cholera so um essentially what what these la latest examples are showing us that uh, there haven't been the most essential steps taken uh, in in the you know in the direction of addressing this this huge concern uh, and the huge concern is uh, also being reiterated over and over again by both the world health organization but but also other un agencies that deal with this including unicef right, and in this context of course vaccines playing an important role and as always when we talk about vaccine the question of inequity also rises so what is the scene with regard to the distribution of vaccines globally when it comes to cholera well, as you know, uh, as many global health experts have uh, have said uh, in the last months, of course, uh, ensuring uh, access to vaccines will not uh, is not the the way to to address cholera outbreaks, but it can make a significant difference. Uh, now, what we have seen uh, in quite a recent past uh, is that uh, because of a lack of stocks uh, at uh, at the WHO. Uh, the WHO has changed uh, its recommendations for, for the regimen. So previously, people would receive two doses of vaccines uh, in, in cases of outbreaks of cholera. Now they're only receiving one. And that's because we're not seeing enough vaccines being produced. So that's uh, that's one of the things that it's likely to continue. Uh, some estimates put the, the, the shortage of vaccines will last at least until 20. 25, probably even longer, uh, which leaves a huge amount of time for for governments and for uh, UN agencies to see, you know, how what to do in the meantime. Of course, one of the uh, one of the things that need to happen is uh, for producers to actually scale up production. Uh, it is not acceptable for them to say, you know, it's not uh, it's not a profitable vaccine, so we're not going to produce them. There need to uh, there need to be some kind of mechanisms that the, the WHO can use in order to effectively lead them to produce enough vaccines to uh, to meet the demand right now. Uh, but of course, this doesn't mean that the governments do not have the responsibility to essentially work on the improvement of living conditions, which would allow more people uh, to, um, to live free uh, of, uh, of fear of cholera. Right. Thank you so much, Anna, for that update. And that's all we have in this episode of Daily Debrief. We'll be back with a fresh episode tomorrow. In the meanwhile, do visit our website, peoplesdispatch.org. Follow us on all the social media platforms. And if you're watching this on YouTube, please hit the subscribe button.